Mickey made it. Mickey made it. What you made, Mickey? Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good energy, good people. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. And if you want to support my brand, right here. Inspiredbydreams.shop is the place to go. Dress outside of the box. Okay, this episode right here, this is a, the latest in the Diddy news. And I felt like I wanted to bring this to you guys just to open your eyes up to some things that I was saying to you guys in my past lives that's coming into fruition. Now, when it comes down to this whole new, the allegations, there's new tapes. And I believe the victims are six male and only two female. And this is what I told you. A lot of this evidence has been hidden because a lot of people Diddy slept with, it's mostly people just trying to call out the females. But think of all the males that he slept with that's trying to cover it up. So let's jump right into it, see the latest what's going down, and see where this case is going because it's definitely not going up, it's going downhill. Let's get it. Because my next guest just testified before a federal grand jury. He says he was in possession of a trove of digital evidence from Diddy's freak-offs and parties. What? His name is Courtney Burgess, and he says a friend gave him 11 flash drives that belonged to the late Kim Porter. And if you follow this story, you'll know that Kim Porter is Diddy's ex-girlfriend and the mother of four of his kids. On those drives, the witness says eight videos featured eight celebrities at Diddy Freakoffs or parties. And that six were males, two were females. Okay, this is exactly what I was talking about. So we have to start realizing Diddy was bisexual and a lot of this stuff being covered up it was because it was mostly males he was sleeping with. The males didn't want this information getting out. The females are ready to step forward, say their name if they have to. So there's a lot of things that we're going to be seeing coming up in this in these up and coming days before it reaches up to, I believe it's May 2025, that we're going to see a lot of things. And I'm also hearing as far as these tapes, don't think that these tapes are not going to be leaked out or they're not going to get stills of these tapes. This all goes into the evidence and it all goes into proving the case against Diddy of an alleged Kim Porter memoir, a memoir that her four kids insist is fake. Courtney Burgess told his story so on a podcast true. before he told the grand jury today, and after he told the grand jury, and I mean immediately after, he booked it over to my set, and he and his attorney talked to me. I should tell you that he was very limited in how much detail he could go into uh, about his testimony. And because the eight people in the videos, the eight celebrities in the videos were allegedly victims of sex crimes. We know who they are, but we will not be naming them. Famous or not. Here now is my conversation with Courtney Burgess and Ariel Mitchell, who's his attorney, beginning with the question of whether the participants in the video even knew they were being recorded. Were there any cameras in places where you'd assume privacy like bathrooms? It, well, I've never been in this house, but the picture, yes, yes, that's what took place. You, yes. you, you're aware, you're aware of of uh, surreptitious uh, cameras that were recording well, in private places like. Bathrooms. I didn't see the cameras. You could tell how it was the person was angled. Not, I knew that it was a camera there because I was there. You know, I was there. I don't know if the person was too tall. He was holding or whatever, but I wasn't there. May I ask you this, Courtney, and um, Ariel, you can jump in on this as well, but I want to hear from Courtney first. Your uh, home was raided by federal authorities, and I assume it is because of, of this material. Is that true? Um, I wouldn't say that. They just went to every one of them looking for me. They said, um, the paperwork said the 24th, that I had to be there the 28th, and then it was, um, to 27th. That's, I can't make it there. That's tomorrow. So I don't know. It's from the look of it, it was four days. Uh, and I want to be specific. When, yes, when we talk about yeah. a raid, um, we're talking about when 
a subpoena is served for documents, a search warrant or an arrest warrant. In this situation, Mr. Uh, Burgess was not in any way, shape or form uh, had a search warrant or an arrest warrant issued for him. It was just them serving a subpoena. So when the federal government needs to serve a subpoena, they use the marshal service to come to all of your residences if you have more than one residence. So in this situation, they sent marshals to all of Mr. Burgess's residences and that was somehow construed or understood or turned into a, a raid but he did not face a raid it was just to serve him a subpoena Ariel, do you believe that the uh, subpoenas were issued and executed based on uh, the federal authorities knowledge um, that these flash drives existed and and had this kind of compromising material i think it was based on statements that mr burgess made in a prior interview and those statements include descriptions of what the witness says he saw on those tapes so i asked him about that and he answered what he could given the limitations imposed on him after testifying before the grand jury look it's looking bad the evidence are now rising to the top and now we're going to see more and more information. Now we can see and see more clearer that this thing has been going on from the past and Kim Porter did leave, you know, write down evidence. That's why I always say, you know, a lot of people, you don't have to tell people when you journal or people call it diaries or whatever. It's just keeping information of what's going on in your life just in case, God forbid, something happens to you. People will know, you know, maybe leading up or you leave something back that you feel uncomfortable with or the type of life you was living that you didn't feel uncomfortable with. These are the things that in the long run will help you out. God forbid something happens. So it does look like, you know, there was some kind of memoir or something Kim Porter did have. And it looks like, you know, maybe has the first one that was sent out maybe has been altered or in somebody's hands that wasn't the rightful owners. And now we're seeing that. I guess the videotapes, six guys, two girls, it's just crazy. As well as, you know, they have the information as far as the memoir. So now we're seeing that this information that they have, people have been trying to make profit off of it. I guess the little pieces they had to try to put things together. But we see who's the owners of this. And we're seeing now that more information is coming, but it's coming with evidence as well. You guys let me know what you think down below. Leave your comments and I'll get back to you guys, whether in the comment section on my morning shows, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. Love you guys. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe.